not a problem. So what you can see here, beautiful Aronel. Okay, so I'm drinking mango smoothies. And guess what? All through the trip, I was cranky. I was hungry. I was enjoying the beautiful scenery and the cloud forest and everything if you've ever been to Costa Rica. But I was realizing that, wow, I'm just not feeling my greatest. I always had to eat food. If I missed a meal, this was not very good. So then I wanna fast forward you to, here we go. This is me, 2018, and I have found freedom, okay? I found freedom on top of a camel in the middle of the Sahara Desert. This is me in Morocco. So what a difference 20 years makes. So when I was traveling through Morocco, I actually was there during Ramadan. And so I was eating just one meal a day. And guess what? I had no food cravings. I wasn't hungry. I was um, able to kind of navigate myself across the country, not worrying about food. So how did this transformation take place? This is what I want you to tell you about today. And this is why I'm here. Because so many times, one of the things that I see people say again and again, I need food, I'm, I'm hungry, I just need to eat, or I have low blood sugar. So this transformation is possible. So how do we do it? It's all about balance. And the way that we get into balance, we're gonna talk a little bit more about today. So some of you probably have seen a little slide like this before, but I want you to understand a little bit about what balance means. So I'm cranky, I need to eat. In other terms, what I learned in 20 years, um, as I was becoming a doctor and figuring out my own body, this is also known as reactive hypoglycemia. So I'm gonna, this is a little snapshot into what you're gonna be able to start doing with the Freestyle Libra. So what you see here is a blood sugar monitor. It's a clip from a Libra. We have blood sugar going from 70 to 140. That's the average range for someone that's not a diabetic. And you can see what's happening. So this individual, their blood sugar, they had um, a very high sugar for breakfast. Their blood sugar went up from about 80 to over the 140 mark. It came back down again. And then you'll see a little red mark here at the bottom. They bottomed out. And then what did they need to do? They needed to eat again. So this is how many of us respond. And if I had worn a Freestyle Libra many years ago, I would have known that that mango smoothie that I was having, it was causing me for my blood sugar to spike. And then it was causing my blood sugar to bottom out on the other end. Then I felt cranky, then I had to eat again. I don't want you to have to go through that. And if you're already going through that, thinking that you get low blood sugar episodes, there is a way to overcome it. So this is why you're here tonight. So what I wanna go through first is why I'm calling this blood sugar the sixth vital sign. And then number two, we'll get into a little bit more about the blood sugar challenge, which is all about body awareness. So that's what I, the two things that I wanna keep you to keep in your mind tonight is that why blood sugar is very important for us to know the impact that it has on our health, but also um, how you can learn to hack your own body and become more aware of what's going on. So we're going to talk about the six vital signs. So I spent 20 years in the emergency department. So when patients would come in, the nurse at the triage, if you've been there before, they ask you for your vitals. So what do we measure? Of course, we measure your blood pressure, your heart rate. We measure your respiratory rate, that's your breathing rate. We measure your oxygen levels in your blood. Often we'll measure your weight because we want to be able to adjust medications. And if you're a diabetic, you would have had your blood sugar measured, but this is not always a standard measurement. However, many people through the years, when I had a really good nurse that was in my triage room, if someone came in and they were feeling lightheaded and dizzy, what would she do? She would do the blood sugar. That was your sixth vital sign. And there were many people that would come in with those symptoms, not feeling well, not feeling themselves, maybe having some vision problems. And what was going on is they had diabetes and they didn't even know it. So blood sugar, is this really important to us? Um, one of the things that I like to do in medicine is always come back to the research and have a little, and have support. So this is a, a paper that I found uh, from January of 2021. This would have been during the height of the, the COVID epidemic, but blood glucose levels should be considered as a new vital sign 
indicative of prognosis during hospitalization. So what does that mean? So if we read a little bit further down, so glycemic variability, which means your blood sugar going high or low, even a high normal blood glucose range can lead to morbidity and mortality in non-diabetic patients. So basically a high blood sugar, even if you weren't diagnosed as a diabetic, if you're entering the hospital, that gives you a worse outcome. So morbidity is the illness that you have and mortality refers to death. So this is a really important number for you to know. And one of the things, as I've seen over my 25 years in total in practice, is that sometimes we put a lot of value on blood pressure. And many times, of course, if you're an asthmatic, we're gonna look at oxygen rate. Or some people will really look at their weight to see, does that mean I'm healthy? Maybe calculating their BMI. But of all those matters, one of the things that is most important is your blood sugar levels. So why do we want a, a, a good blood sugar? So you can see, I went from being cranky in Costa Rica to having a world of freedom on top of my camel when I was in Morocco, okay? But when we have a balanced blood sugar, what goes on? So we actually have a body that can clean and heal itself. So many times in medicine, we're trying to look at ways that we can band-aid the problem. We give you a pill, we try something to lower it, but guess what? Your body knows how to reset itself if we give it the conditions. But the first level of knowing that is we have to become aware of our body and know what's going on. We all want a long and healthy life, and we know that high blood sugar uh, leads to lower life expectancy. You want to feel good about your weight. You want to have clear thoughts. You don't want to be living in a world of brain fog all the time. You don't want to be cranky or hangry, as we call it. You want to feel happy. We know that mood uh, is impacted by blood sugar. We want to have, of course, a healthy heart. We want to have tons of energy. You want to remove that afternoon slump that you get after a meal. We want to sleep better. And of course, we all want to feel loved. And does blood sugar have anything to do with that? No, but I just, I'm so happy that you're all here tonight. And I'm doing this webinar because truly, I just want you to learn from my experiences that I've had as a physician. And I wanna be able to teach you and get you to understand what's going on in your body. So as we begin, we do have to learn a little bit. Okay, so I'm gonna take you back to biology. So in biology, we have two things that you need to know about. So one, we all know about blood glucose, right? And most of you have heard about insulin. So insulin is a hormone that's released from the pancreas, okay? So insulin goes into your blood to lower that blood sugar level and to bring it down. So that's why a type one diabetic, someone that's been born with diabetes, they have to take an injection of insulin, put it into their bellies to bring their blood sugar down. But what happens when people get insulin resistance? So some of you may have heard of this word before, but some of you may not be familiar with it. So I wanna take you through this little pathway. So we eat food, if you look here in the center, okay? Then our body is going to make insulin. It's gonna get secreted from our pancreas into our bloodstream. But what can happen when individuals have insulin resistance that it goes to the cells, but it doesn't recognize them. It's kind of knocking on the door and the insulin saying, I wanna get this blood sugar out of the bloodstream but the body is not responding. So then what is it gonna do? Insulin, remember this, is a fat storage hormone. So when blood sugar goes up, if it doesn't get into the bloodstream, then it's gonna be stored as fat. And most of us don't want that. And then what's the response that our body feels? Well, we're gonna feel tired and hungry. And what do we do when we're tired and hungry and our defenses are down? Then we eat more food. And then we go into this cycle that builds more and more on insulin resistance. So we need to learn how to break this cycle. So why is insulin a problem? So number one, you just heard me say fat storage. And many of you that might be listening tonight because you wanna lose weight are like, okay, I need to get my insulin levels down. And it's true because one of the complications we see from hyperinsulinemia, which means high insulin levels, some of you might've heard of PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome. So this is a condition that many women have when they have irregular cycles. But this is one of the conditions that we see that has high insulin levels. But some of the things, and of course we know about diabetes and we know about prediabetes. I'm sure you've heard about that. But what you may not be aware of 
that high insulin levels can also lead to neuropsychiatric illnesses. So we can see things from all, like Alzheimer's. Alzheimer's, when you look at diabetics overall, they have a five times greater risk of developing Alzheimer's later in life. If we look at peripheral neuropathy, so that's the pins and needles that people get in their hands. So that is much higher when people have high insulin levels. We see things like fatty liver disease, even ulcerative colitis. Um, also, we can see cancers. So we know several cancers, breast, ovarian, colon, and bladder are directly linked to high insulin levels. We also see things like tinnitus, ringing in the ears, vertigo can be linked. And, uh, we, and I see many times as well, osteoarthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, that can be linked to high insulin levels. So what are we gonna do about this insulin? And just a few more little bits of knowledge that I want you to know. Okay, so we're talking about two things in this graph. So what is the natural history of diabetes? Cause you know, we hear a lot about diabetes. So look at the blue line first. So in the blue line, this is your blood glucose level. Okay, it's going up. So we go from normal to impaired glucose or prediabetes, and then we go up to type two diabetes. So as, as blood sugar goes up, if you look now at the green line, we're gonna look at insulin. So as blood sugar goes up, insulin resistance also goes up. So it gets harder and harder for that blood sugar to come down. But I want you to look at the third line, which is very important here. And when I saw this about 15 years ago, it really startled me. And it said, Tiffany, you really need to talk to people more about prevention. Look at the beta cell, okay? Beta cell dysfunction. So remember the insulin comes from our pancreas. That's the organ that's right in the middle. So when we get, uh, in the beginning, we started with a good number of um, beta cells. But then as we get further and further down the spectrum, as blood glucose levels get higher, the beta cells die off and insulin production goes down. So this is about timing. What we wanna get is we want to get you so that you can make the lifestyle changes so that you don't go into a period where your pancreas is starting to not work at 100%. So that's blood sugar. Now, many of you have heard about blood cholesterol. So I want you to think, and this is a leading question, of course, but this is a man, he's coming into my emergency room. And I saw this many times and times again. So he came in, we do all the blood work and I look at his blood cholesterol, I look at his blood sugar. What do you think is most closely correlated with heart attacks? Leading question, guess what? It's blood sugar, not the cholesterol. So I'm gonna show you something here. Because I know that many of you, when you go to your physician's office, you're told, you know, your cholesterol is good. Maybe your blood sugar is mentioned, but often the focus really is on blood cholesterol levels. So I want you to look at this graph, okay? So what I've written here, LDL cholesterol does not predict heart disease. And this is an important point to know. So what we have here on the bottom, we have total cholesterol, we have triglycerides, we have LDL, what some would call the bad cholesterol, and we have HDL, what people call the good cholesterol. And if you look in white, we have heart disease and in gray, we have less heart disease, okay? So if you look at this correlation, what we're seeing here, total cholesterol, which might be a number that your doctor talks to you about, they might say, oh, 200 or 220, and they would say, oh, that number is okay. But guess what? There's no clear correlation between your total cholesterol and your risk for heart disease. If we look at LDL, the bad cholesterol, you know, the one that many people are on a statin to lower, again, this number is not directly predictive of heart disease. But guess what is? The triglycerides in your blood and also the HDL. And so these two things, triglycerides and HDL, go along with the third triad of blood sugar. So why is blood sugar the one that we wanna watch? So this is just a little, some little bit of science for you, but on the bottom here, we have HbA1c. So HbA1c is the three month measurement of blood sugar. As it grows, and let's just look at the number here for men in black. So here we have um, normal blood A1c, 5%. Then we get up into prediabetes, we get into 6%, 6.5, 
and then we get over 7%. So you can see a direct correlation, the higher your A1C, the higher your risk for heart disease. This is a number you wanna know. One more slide on this. So we know that looking at the numbers, you know, ideal number for an A1C level is less than 5.6. Pre-diabetes, some of you might've heard about that, is 5.7 to 6.4 and diabetes is over 6.5. Now on the bottom, these numbers are in Canadian units, but what we know is the higher that your A1C gets, which is generally reflective of your sugar, the greater your chance of passing away from heart disease. And we don't want that. And we know that you can thrive and survive. You just have to learn how to pay attention and you have to learn what's going on in your body. And this is um, the final slide I want to show a little bit more of the science. So this is the one that really caught my eye uh, about 15 years ago. And this shows the years from the onset of type two diabetes. So if you look at time zero, this is when the A1C is at 6.5%. So some of you might've been told, you know, you have a little bit of sugar, you know, maybe you're a pre-diabetic, but if you look at this, this is time zero. And at this point, 58%, you have 58% of beta cell function. If you wait till five years after you're diagnosed, your beta cell function is going to 42%. And after 10 years, your beta cell function is going down even further if you don't make any changes, right? So what we wanna do is we wanna get you early because those beta cells, they can be restored. And I just had this question the other day, beta cells can be restored because we know people can get off of insulin. We know that there can be some reversal of diabetes and pre-diabetes, but the earlier that you get to this, the better. So what are we gonna do? So this is what I said, you know, I've been using the Freestyle Libra since I think 2007, 2017. I first started using it in Canada and I love gadgets. For those of you that know me, you know, I wear an aura ring that tracks things. I've got my Freestyle Libra on. So what is this little device? Okay, you've learned the science and now we're gonna learn how, can this be fun? Is this really going to apply to me? So this is a little device that's on the back of my arm. It's very small. And it's got a sensor in the back that is like a little piece of fishing line, okay? For the Canadians that are out there, it's fishing season right now. So this little sticker goes onto your arm. There's a little device, a little contraption. Basically, you uh, put it in the little device. You kind of go click, takes you five seconds, and then it's on the back of your arm. This little device, as you can see, is worn for two weeks. So this is gonna provide you with a continuous 24 hours a day monitoring of your blood sugar. So you're also gonna get a little um, a scanner. So if you're in Bermuda, you will have a scanner. If you're in Canada and listening in, you can actually download an app on your phone and the app will do the scanning for you, okay? So Canadians, this is one advantage that you have. I know you don't have Bermuda sunshine, but you can use your phone to scan for your, free sugar, for your blood sugar, okay? So as long as you scan about four or five times a day, then what you're gonna do is you're gonna get a printout to be in a, a reading so that you can see what's gone on during the course of your day. So what does this look like and why is it important? So what I want you to know, what we're gonna do in the 14 day challenge is you're gonna look for a few things. One of the things you're gonna look for is a food response. So this is a patient that came in and she thought she was doing so well with her health. And she's like, and I put the monitor on and this was like her first day. It was on a Monday. This was last summer. And I'm like, wow, you know, what is this spike at like eight o'clock in the morning? Well, she's like, Dr. Keenan, I, you know, made myself a smoothie. You know, it had bananas, it had berries, um, it had almond milk, it had some green stuff like spinach and kale. And I'm like, wow, that caused her blood sugar to spike up to probably about 170, well, probably 180, okay? That was from a fruit smoothie. Then we have one of the other things that we can start to do with blood sugar is we can begin to track patterns. And this is what I do when my patients come into the office, we upload their data and we see what's going on. So this is another patient and he was, uh, he worked late at night. He works for a tech company. So often they uh, shut the computers down at night and he has to go in and reboot them. And so I said, what's going on here? Because he was eating pretty good in the daytime. But then we looked at his values. 
So what you see here is like a five day value, okay? And so you're seeing the 70 to 140 mark. So this is the nighttime, 12 midnight, and then this is the morning. So if we look in through here from 12 midnight to morning, he's getting some pretty big peaks just in the middle of the night. If you look down here on this Friday, May 20th, his numbers were soaring. And even on Saturday, he was not eating. He was only up late at night. So one of the things that you, that's really important to look at with the monitor is to find out what your body's response is. Now he was up late because he was working, but for many of you, maybe you're restless sleepers. Maybe you have sleep apnea. If that's going on, then your body elicits a stress response. And when a stress response happens, the body shoots up insulin, it shoots up sugar. And this can all be happening while you're sleeping. So I know that for many of you, you can check your blood sugar in the daytime and you can start to see the trends. But these are some of the really interesting trends I think that the Freestyle Libra is able to give us because it's a 24 hour blood glucose monitor. So the other thing you'll be able to do in the 14 days is you can customize your own food hacks, okay? So this is me uh, on this weekend. So at the top here, we have me with a bowl of oatmeal, okay? So I've got a half a cup of oatmeal. Now I use Lakanto maple syrup, which is uh, a low sugar maple syrup. And uh, it, I know it does not spike my blood sugar and I put some cinnamon on, okay? If you look at my graph, you can see that I was very low when I started. I was a 78, but look at this peak. This bowl of oatmeal, that's all that I had, it brought me from basically 70 to 140. But then I said, okay, I'm gonna hack this because I have to show you guys, it can be done. So then I got my bowl. So I reduced my oatmeal. So I, I went to a third a cup of oatmeal, but I added a big scoop of plain yogurt. I added a handful of um, walnuts and then I added some blueberries. And look at this, look at my curve. So overall, actually I had more calories because these nuts and these yogurt gave me more calories, but I did a few things here. So I paired my carb with other foods. And you'll start to find that this is so important, this concept of food pairing. So when I added a protein and a fat, and then I added some fiber, additional fiber from the berries, I was able to minimize my blood sugar. So one of the things when we're, I review sugar with patients, I say, what we wanna look are, we wanna look for rolling hills. Now this is not a big hill, but it's a rolling hill rather than Mount Everest. So my goal for you over the, and the reason that I'm doing that, the 14 day challenge for those that want to participate is truly, I want you to become the master of your fate. So for me as a physician, I see you for a very short period of time. I can do a simple blood sugar measurement when I do your blood test. I can even do an A1C measurement, which can give me some idea of what's going on. But what I really want to know is what's going on on a continuous basis. And that's only something that you can do for yourself by wearing a monitor like this. So over the course of the 14 days, we're gonna learn lots of tips. Your top tips for sugar control, I won't go through these all now, but you're gonna learn that and you're gonna learn so much more. So how is it gonna work? So basically it's gonna start next Monday, which is May the 1st. So Monday is gonna be our final preparation day. So if, for any last minute questions. And then on Tuesday, we're gonna do a group. We're gonna do a group all together. We're gonna to put our freestyle Libras on, okay? So I'm gonna show you how it's done. You'll take your packages out. We'll all do that together. This is gonna be live on Zoom. So what do you need to do? How do you prepare yourself for this challenge? So you're gonna need either a freestyle Libra, okay? or glucose test strips. So if you're based here in Bermuda, you can pick up the Libra, the Diabetes Center sells it, and most of the pharmacies will sell it as well. You're going to need to get the sensor, this little button, but you're also gonna buy the reader, okay? Now, I have been, the Diabetes Center, I'm doing this in conjunction with them, and they have given me four sensors, okay? So for those who register, I'm gonna put your names in, and um, actually, the way I'll probably do this is maybe on the Facebook page is people that say that they're I'm in from Bermuda. If you say that the first four people that go there, I will give you a free sensor. OK, a free sensor. If you're in Canada, like I said, you're going to be able to pick up these sensors from any pharmacy. 
And by the way, the cost in Bermuda is around 120 US dollars. In Canada, you can buy it at the pharmacies. It's anywhere from 90 to $110. That's Canadian. I wish we could all get you there for the discount. Um, but you'll be able to buy it from the pharmacies. Okay, so that's what you need. You just need a sensor. Or for those of you that maybe you don't want to spend the money for a sensor, but maybe you have diabetes or you have access to the test strips, you can also use test strips. You'll have to poke your finger a little bit more, but at least you'll be able to do some of the little challenges that we're gonna do, okay? And then the other thing you need is just a journal or a daily diary. So this can be uh, as simple as just a notebook, okay? But I'm also preparing a little journal for you. And it's just gonna have a few things that you can track as you go through the 14 days. So how is it gonna work? So on week one, we're gonna do simply food tracking. So this is the easiest challenge that you're gonna do because there's no food restrictions. You don't have to count anything, but you just have to track it, okay? And what you're gonna do when you're tracking, you're also gonna track what your sleep is like, what your stress level is like, if there's something going on, and your exercise levels. An easy way to track, and this is what I tell my patients, you can write it all down, or even better, or if it's easier for you, is honestly, you can take a picture on your phone. If you take a picture, a picture has a timestamp, and then you can correlate that with your data. So we're gonna do seven days of food tracking, okay? And then week two, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a data download. So I'm gonna show you how to log on to LibraView, um, which is the company that Freestyle Libra has made by. So they have an online database. So you can upload your own data. All you need is a little connection that comes with it. Or again, if you're in Canada and you have the Canadian sensor, you'll have the app on your phone and then you can just go online and it will actually directly correlate, okay? And even more, once you download your data, you can actually do a LibraView link up. So for those of you that are here with family or friends, or maybe you wanna get family and friends involved, you can actually look at their blood sugar. So I'm gonna show you how to do that as well. And then on week two, we're gonna do a series of food challenges and we're gonna do a few other little hacks because what I want you to do is to make the most out of the sensor. I know this is, you know, $100 or more is a lot of money. So I want you to really get the most that you can out of this two weeks of information. And by the way, for those of you that have diabetes or prediabetes, you can speak with your physician because it is covered under most major, major medical health insurance plans. So we're gonna do the food challenges and then we're gonna analyze your data. Oh, and my one caveat, for those that are gonna take the four free sensors from the diabetes sensor center, is by taking those sensors, I want you to be willing to come on and have your data analyzed because we've got some great people coming, okay? So who do we have? We've got, um, so during the nights of the challenge, I'm gonna have as many speakers as I can. We're gonna try to go live every night at 7.30 as much as possible through Facebook Zoom. But if I can't get the speakers live, then I'll do a recording that night. So we've got Sarah Bostanoia. Many of you probably know Sarah, uh, who is a diabetes educator here in Bermuda. She's wonderful and I love her greatest hack is no naked carbs. I love that, that's Sarah's hack. We've got Dr. Danielle Miller, who's a chiropractor, who's wearing the Freestyle Libra for the first time. So she's gonna share some of her, what she's seen in her body. Uh, Nursa Douglas, who's a nutritionist, who's worn the Libra and she's counseling people all the time about nutrition and blood sugar, gut health and more. We've got Trina Sutherland, who is a pharmacist from Canada and she's gonna be sharing her values um, on the Freestyle Libra. We've got Rosalind Cure, who's gonna talk about low carb and keto nutrition a little bit because some of you might've heard about keto and what it can do to blood sugar. Dr. Hannah Lewan, who is at family practice here in Bermuda and we're gonna have patient testimonials and more. So, I know I've kind of gone through a lot of information, um, but I just want you to know. So remember our takeaways, blood sugar, it's the sixth vital sign. You need to know it. You want to get that insulin levels down because you want to reduce your risk of disease. And what I'm offering you is a freestyle Libra and a continued monitoring of it so that you can develop body awareness, that you can have precision health that is customized just for you. So with that being said, I just like to take any questions that people have from the room. So if you have questions, you can either, I have the, um, the chat box up, so you can either post there, or if you want to just um, raise your hand up, then I'll take questions and I'll, we'll unmute, unmute you.
And I want to let people know as well, I know there's a few in the group that are gonna be joining me. So I am gonna be doing this in live, at the, in person at the Diabetes Center starting next Thursday. So for those that are in Bermuda, Thursday at 4.30 at the Diabetes Center, we're gonna come and, if you haven't put your patch on, we'll put it on then, but we're gonna do like a little cooking class as well. This is just in addition um, to what I'm gonna be doing online during the, the two weeks. And if you haven't, if you didn't know about that, or if you'd like to register, please just send me a, um, a message about that. So the life of the sensor is two weeks. And the sensor will tell you that it, when it's running out, it will come up. You've got two days left, you've got one day left, you've got one hour left, and it's really easy to take it off. You just pull it off, okay? Um, the Facebook page that we're on is Dr. Tiffany's Family. So as long as you're there, um, again, you'll, you'll see the link that's gonna be posted, the Zoom link. And once you're registered, that's where I'm gonna upload the food diary. And I'm also gonna be posting each day once we start doing the challenges. And there'll be lots of helpful hints on Dr. Tiffany's family. Um, the Bermuda Diabetes Center. For, so for those that are here, um, it's basically on the corner of Dundonald and Princess Street. So uh, Dundonald, if you, you've got Gosling's and then you've got the SO garage. So just a few steps away from that down in the corner is the Diabetes Center. It's a, it's a yellow building. There's a small little parking lot in through there. And like I said, the Diabetes Center is open. I think it's eight to five most days uh, that you'd be able to drop in and, and uh, pick up one of the sensors. So just to talk a little bit, maybe I'll share stories if people have any more questions. But, um, you know, when we look at this as well, and we think about, you know, and I've kind of geared this toward, um, you know, pre-diabetics and, and people that really just want to know a little bit more about their health. But I had a patient in yesterday and we were talking about blood sugar for type 1 diabetics. And um, she was saying that her son still really has issues with managing his blood sugar. And what often happens, if you know type ones, you've often seen that the blood sugar goes low, they grab a juice or they grab a Coke, but then what happens is they get a glucose spike and then they kind of chase things. The blood sugar goes up, they give themselves more insulin. So another person that could join the challenge is also a type one diabetic, okay? We're not restricting any foods. We're trying to develop body awareness because what you know, um, type one diabetics that have been able to have good control, just like my patient yesterday, she knows that she needs to eat a carb with a protein and some fiber. And when she does that, it helps to stabilize the blood sugar. So type ones are welcome to come along as well. Um, the cooking program, so it's gonna be at 4.30. So the class is gonna run uh, next Thursday. It'll run 4.30 to 5.30 or so. And then we're gonna do it on the following Thursday and the following Tuesday. So we're gonna have it on three different occasions. So if you're in Bermuda, you just need to contact me and we'll get you set up. You can come to all three classes or if you can only make one class, then that's fine as well. And for the cooking, um, you're gonna see some of my favorite foods that I like to cook. You know, I've been through this. Um, I know what's worked in my body and uh, I do like to cook. So I'll share some of those recipes with you. And yes, so for the cooking at the Diabetes Center, so send me a message, either send me a direct Facebook message or send me a message, um, you can message the office, um, probably best to send me an email um, and we'll get you registered for that. And a copy of the video, yes. So what I'm gonna be doing is I will uh, upload this to YouTube and it's free to share. Um, maybe I'll, I'll keep this part going too with our question, Q and A's at the end. So if you're on vacation, that's interesting, Michelle, because some people say to me, oh, Dr. Keenan, I don't wanna do it because I'm not eating good right now. But you know something? Well, that's okay, right? Because what you wanna know is what's your lifestyle really like? Um, you know, if you're going out and having a few drinks, is that impacting your blood sugar? So I had a patient come in um, and he was going out and having some drinks on the weekend. And what he realized is that, you know, having a few drinks and having like a charcuterie board, that was fine. But what was really driving his blood sugar up was his big bowl of Cheerios in the morning, right? So until you start to track this yourself, it's quite surprising um, what, you, what you'll start to notice. 
So it doesn't matter where you're going with it. The only caution I'll say, if you're gonna be flying off island or if you're traveling, is that sometimes at the airports, they're gonna say, what is that you have in your arm? And then just say, I'm wearing a diabetes sensor. You know, they should be familiar with it now, but you can always give them a head up, heads up if you're gonna be going through uh, security. So wearing the monitor, that's a good question. So this really depends. You know, I have a few diabetics and some of them have, and, and pre-diabetics, some of them will wear the monitor and they gather this information and they say, Dr. Keenan, that's it. I know what I need to do. I had a lady in the other day and I'll share some of her images, but she was having wine gums at night. So wine gums are like a jujube if anybody's seen those before. And basically with these wine gums, what happens is, um, it really spiked her blood sugar at nighttime, okay? So it was spiking her blood sugar, not just in the evening, but as she was sleeping as well. So what we want to see is, um, what she said is, I'm just gonna get rid of the wine gums and I'm not gonna wear the sensor again now for three more months. So sometimes what I'll do with, if the diabetic's coming in is we'll give them three months and then before their appointment, then they'll put the sensor on again for another two weeks, okay? I have another diabetic and she's done amazingly well. I'm hoping she'll come on and talk with you all. But her A1C has gone from like 10 down to 5.2%. She did this in six months, okay? Incredible. Now she's on a few medications as well, but she's made remarkable progress. And I said, well, do you really still wanna wear it? And she says, it gives me accountability, okay? So this really is customized. And the thing that I've seen more and more in medicine, which is why I love to educate and give you options, is because what works for one person doesn't work for another person. So you really have to know what's going on in your body and what might uh, work best for you. Now, many, of course, if you're type one diabetic, many type ones will wear them continuously because they have to adjust your, their insulin. But you know, if you're not on any medications or if you're on something, if you're just on a few tablets, gen, uh, you know, uh, Genuvia or Metformin or even Ozempic, it's not necessarily to monitor your blood sugar all the time. What we're really looking for is the patterns. Because once you see those patterns, it's no going back, right? So when I had the individual that I showed you and he talked with us about when we looked at his nighttime values, so he knows that now. So he knows the number one thing he needs to work on is sleep because it's not his daytime that's the problem. So the food is not the issue, the sleep is the issue. Okay, you'll see other images that I'll share with you. Of, um, I have a school teacher and I love this because she had the monitor on. She ate the same thing every day for lunch. And then we looked at her values and I'm like, what happened? Because two days in a row, one, her sugar was nice. It was like a rolling hill. Okay, the next time her hill was like a, a mountain. It was like a Himalaya, right? She's like, it was exam day at school. So it was an exam day. Her stress level was up and that was enough to rise her blood sugar up as well. So it truly is you know, fascinating. And one of the things that I'll let you know, so in America, you could sign up with a company called Levels. You could sign up with a company called NutriSense. And what they do is they help, they have an app that will track this for you and it will help you make informed decisions. In Canada and in Bermuda, we don't have that app. And so that's one of the reasons I wanna offer you this challenge is so that we can do this interpretation together and I can be there to answer questions as you go through this. So any other questions? No, so I hope to see you on the challenge. So check in at the Facebook page tomorrow. I'm gonna to download the diary. If you wanna to come to the cooking classes with me, make sure you send me a message. They're gonna be next Thursday and bring a friend along. That's what I'll tell you and have fun with this. It's gonna be, be a really good couple of weeks. So thanks everybody tonight for attending and uh, stay tuned. I'll post um, the replay in the Facebook page. Have a great night, everyone. Take care. Thanks a lot. Okay. You're very welcome.